the word critical mass actually depends on lots of things. I mean, suppose you have a critical mass and it looks, and it looks like this. It's not a critical mass anymore because the neutrons will fly out and they're not going to hit anything. So it's not just a matter of the mass. You have to kind of put it into a sphere to really make it into a critical mass so that there's no way you can fly out without hitting something. Can't have it long and thin. The geometry matters. There's another thing. Suppose you compress it and take the same thing and push it into a small, tight bundle. Well, think of the atoms. Here you are in the middle, and you're looking out, and you see the stars. Those are the other atoms. You wonder, if I go off in that direction, will I hit one? If you compress them and bring them really close and tight, the space between them is much smaller, you're more likely to hit it. So the critical mass depends on whether you've compressed it or not. So when we say the critical mass of something, you have to recognize it, 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 it's not just so many kilograms. It's also the geometry. The first atomic bomb on Hiroshima worked in the following way. Two pieces, I don't actually know what the shape of the pieces was, but let's just assume it's a hemisphere like this. Each piece was less than a critical mass. What that means is on the average, a neutron would come out, it might hit, it might not, but on the average, you know, it, it, it would, would go, I mean, it would, would leak out. This was put inside of a gun, it's called a gun design. An ordinary explosive, not gunpowder, but probably some, something called a high explosive was put in here. They, they gave it a nickname, they called it Little Boy. Uh, they had two bombs. They had two bombs and only two bombs. Uh, at the time, they, they dropped this. Uh, dropped down on a parachute. Once it was above the city, I'm not sure, a thousand feet or just how above, they detonated it in the air. They did that because this does maximum damage. This way, you have line of sight to more. If you do it down the ground, you don't get as much damage as if you do it in the air. They figured out the most damaging altitude to do it. The way it worked was they detonated the high explosive. This piece went flying towards this piece. When they came together, you had a critical mass. At that point, you had two pieces that when a neutron came, and I don't know whether they used this trick to get neutrons. I, I, I think they might have. They had one piece with alpha particles on it, the other with beryllium. So when they come together, suddenly you get some neutrons. Uh, now this neutron goes and causes a fission. Out come two neutrons. Each one of those causes a fission, two, four. And now you ask, how many times do you have to double? You go from 1 to 2 to 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, 256, 512. After 10 additional steps, you're up 1,000. A factor of 1,000. That's after 10 steps. 2 to the 8th. Is it 1,000? 9 steps. Wait. Start with, start with 1. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. Thousand. So 10 steps, 2 to the 10 is 1,000. 10 steps later, you have another factor of 1,000 in the number of neutrons. You have a million. That's another 10 steps. Another 10 steps, you have a billion. Another 10 steps, you have a trillion. By the time you get up to about 75 steps, you have Avogadro's number. That means basically every nucleus in that uranium has fissioned and released its energy, the energy being a million times greater than an equal weight of TNT. So there's your atomic bomb. That's how it works. Use this doubling. Now, of course, there is a problem. Once this thing, what's happening is that when you get the fission, these fission fragments are flying out, and they have a lot of energy. It's kinetic energy. They collide into things and they heat everything up. So what you're really doing is turning this into heat. What the atomic bomb is really doing is taking that nuclear energy and creating a huge amount of heat. Now here we're, here we're going, you know, one billionth of a second, two billionths of a second, three billionths of a second. I think these things are probably doubling every ten billionths of a second. They double, 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 double. You get to a certain point where now you have the same energy density as dynamite. At that point, the thing blows itself apart, and it stops. Well, that's no good. That's like dynamite. You could have dropped dynamite. So what's the secret? 
The secret is that the neutrons are going really, really fast. You get up to the level of dynamite, this stuff is all heated, it's starting to blow itself apart, and here it goes, it blows itself apart. But meanwhile, the neutrons are going real fast, they're doubling, 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 and before it blows itself apart, you release even more energy. So that's the trick of the atomic bomb, it's one of the tricks, is you use these fast, super fast neutrons, so the doubling takes place a lot faster than the blowing itself apart. Finally, it gets up, you know, where all the energy is released, and the thing, and at that point you wait around for the thing to blow itself apart. And what do you get? Well, you get several things. One is you get that enormous energy of the blast. That's largely heat, and, and, and the heat goes to this big explosion. That's what kills, killed most of the people. Estimates of from 50 to 150,000 people died in Hiroshima. We don't really know the answer because there wasn't that much left. So, it's mostly this huge energy release. Now, in addition, some of these fission fragments are radioactive. Plus, there's some radiation emitted. There are gamma rays that are emitted from this explosion. <clears throat> also, some of the neutrons leak out. These neutrons can also hurt people. <clears throat> but as you learned last week, the, the, the death from radiation and from radioactivity at Hiroshima was really quite small. Mostly, it was the blast. You can't die of cancer if you're killed in a fireball. So that's what happened in Hiroshima. A few days later, or in Nagasaki, another bomb was dropped. It was not a uranium bomb. Here's the surprising thing about the uranium bomb, and this is really important if you want to understand terrorism, what's going on in Iraq, Iran, and, 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 and North Korea. This bomb was never tested. Why wasn't it tested? Well, because if we used up all the uranium we had. I say we. I was about six months old at the time. No, a year and a half. Used up basically all the uranium we had. Why? Because it turns out uranium is very, very hard to get. Uranium-235, as I'll explain, it has to be made out of uranium-235. Uranium-238 pollutes it. It keeps it from exploding. You have to purify it. You have to have almost pure uranium-235. And that was very hard to do. I'll be telling you that story in a moment. So it was very hard to get uranium. Secondly, this thing is such a simple design. Everybody was pretty sure it would work. The design was easy. Look at it. I mean, there's stories that you'll see in the newspaper now and then. Some high school kid will get together and he'll draw this picture. Maybe he'll get it from one of the popular books that has it. And then he'll show his teacher, and the teacher will look at it and say, wow, let me call up the newspapers. I say, I had a high school student who designed a nuclear bomb. And they'll say, oh, really? Let's check that. So they'll take his sketch, and they'll send it off to the Livermore Laboratory. And they'll talk to a bomb designer there, and they'll say, would this thing work? And he'll look at the sketch and say, yeah, that'll work. And then the newspaper headline is, High School Kid Designs Atom Bomb. That's how these stories come about, by the way. You've probably heard them. You are now as educated as you need to be to compete with that headline. Mulder's class at Berkeley teaches students how to design atomic bombs. So you can just imagine what fun people could have with that one. But I, that's it. Okay? Now, there's some details you have to get right, but they're not hard. And anybody who's worked with cannons can probably figure them out. Plus, you get someone who has some background in nuclear physics. Not hard to do. The hard part of the uranium bomb is getting the uranium. 